All right, we're gonna stand against the wall. Hi, my name is Simone. We're streaming this class today. It is an intro to rope therapy. You don't have to have any experience, but you do if you're following this class with me at home. I have to have a rope system to do a lot of the stuff. We're gonna walk forward here, away from the wall. Good, just lean away from the wall a little. Good. Now we want to form a straight line, so we'll look in front of you on the floor. Lift the gaze. And now press away the floor with the balls of the feet and the toes and lift your heels up. Good. Squeeze your shoulder blades together behind the back. Work your feet. Press through the toes and the balls of the feet like you're wearing stilettos. Lengthen your tailbone towards your heels. And keep the chin lifting. It's really tempting to look down. We want to create a nice long line with the spine. Lower your heels. Lean back towards the wall. We're going to place the knots of the ropes on the shoulders. And we're just going to, again, lean away from the wall, walking our heels back towards the wall, slightly pigeon toed. Lift your gaze again. Good. So we're lifting the chin. We're looking forward towards the wall in front of us. Allow gravity to pull the shoulders back towards one another, shoulder blades together. Let the chest open and stretch. Lift your chin, feel a nice stretch through the front of the throat. Pull the front rib cage and your navel towards your spine. Lengthen your tailbone towards your heels, creating a nice straight line. And again, press through the toes, lift your heels off the mat. That chin lifting changes the cervical spine and squeeze physically. Think of the shoulder blades coming together. Good. And now pull your ribs and your navel back towards you because they'll float forward. Last two breaths here. Is anyone's fingertips tingly? Yeah, lower down. Step forward away from the wall. And now we're going to hold on to the ropes with our hands. And again, we're going to walk as far away from the wall as feels comfortable, opening up the chest, and just gently lean away. Not a big incline. Again, lift your chin, lift your gaze. One more time, lift the heels. Come up nice and high. Try to keep pressure in the big toes. Push down. Squeeze your glutes together. back towards the wall and bend your elbows so that now we point the elbows towards the wall behind us and we allow our, ourselves to lean away from the wall. I pitch and toe my feet again. So my toes are pointing in, my heels are in a little bit wider. <clears throat> good. This should feel good after what we've just done. Take some of that tingling feeling. Really draw the shoulder blades together. Notice how your elbows point back a little more. Lift your chin, lift your gaze. And again, press through the toes and the balls of the feet and lift the heels. Good. Pull the ribs and the navel towards the spine. Lengthen your tailbone towards your heels. Think of the ears and the crown of the head lifting away from the shoulders. We're growing taller. Now notice where you're stretching. We're stretching across the sternum, across the chest, the collarbones. Encourage that stretch. Visualize your collarbones stretching apart from one another. The skin between the collarbones growing wider. Notice how those shoulder blades come together even more. Let's lower the heels. Step back with your left heel almost to the wall. Now step forward with your right foot. We're forming a warrior one stance. So in order to do that, we need to get the left toes pointing towards the left front corner of the mat. Good. Bend your right knee until all you can see is just the toes. Make sure that your left heel has some weight in the mat. Push back into the left heel. Good. And now lean away from the wall. Good. So our elbows are still pointing back. Now warrior one is a back bend. So push into your left heel. Look up towards the ceiling. Now exhale, straighten your right leg. 
and look forward. We're going to link our movement with breath. Point your elbows towards the wall behind you. Bend your right knee. Look for just the toes. That's your perfect 90 degree angle. If you can, if you've got me on your toes, take your foot out further and then bend your knee again until all you see are your toes. Good. Now press into your left heel and look up. Now exhale, straighten your right leg. Look forward. Good. If you want to make it more challenging and add the arms of warrior one, inhale, bend your right knee and sweep your arms up till the palms touch. So lower, straighten the legs. Inhale, bend your right knee. Sweep up the arms. Palms press together. Exhale. It looks gentle, it looks graceful. The more gracefully you look, the harder and you're working. Look for your toes, sweep up the arms, push into your back heel. If we're leaning away from the wall, the ropes are helping balance us. So we're going to look as graceful as we can with that support. Bend your right knee, look for the toes. Sweep up the arms. functional movement, we feel all sorts of muscles working from the back of our Achilles ankle all the way through to our fingertips. Bend, sweep up the arms. Exhale, three more like this. We can do it. Keep that breath moving. Inhaling as the arms sweep up. Exhale as the arms come down. Make sure you've got stability, pressure there. And now bend your left knee until all you can see are just your toes. It's going to feel different on this side. Just start by keeping the elbows bent. Press into your right heel, look up. Exhale, straighten your left leg, look forward. Good, lean away from the wall as you come forward. Bend the left knee, look for the toes. Now look up, press into the right heel. Exhale, straighten your left leg. Good. Inhale, look for the toes. Look up. Exhale. If you want to make it more challenging, do a full warrior one flow. Inhale the arms all the way up as you press into your right heel. Press the palms together. And now exhale, straighten the left leg as the arm is lower. Inhale, look for the toes. Don't go beyond them with your knee. Sweep your arms up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, bend your left knee. Sweep up the arms. Don't go beyond them. Good job. Look for the toes. Sweep up the arms. Exhale. Good job. You're linking your movement to your breathing. Exhale as the arms lower. 
straighten the left leg. Inhaling as we take the left knee back into that 90 degree angle, our warrior one position. Sweep up the arms. Three more after this. You can do it. It's deceptively challenging. Back, step back towards the wall and then walk away from the wall. Come up. We're going to walk ourselves to the wall and I want you to take your head to the wall. Press your feet into the floor so that you're coming into standing mountain. Push some of the, your body weight down into the earth. Reach your fingertips down towards the floor so the shoulders drop. And now take the back of your head and push away the wall. This is for the back of our neck. Draw your ribcage, draw your navel towards the wall. Keep pressing away the wall. We're here for 10 more breaths. Count down your breaths. Become aware of the breath as it moves through the body. Notice every inhale, the body swells and expands. Notice on every exhale where the body contracts. Keep your body weight pushing away the floor through the feet. Like you're shoving away the ground. Use the back of your head to push away the wall. Reach your fingertips down. Drop those shoulders. And see if you can just touch the wall with your shoulder blades. Shove away the wall with your heels. 
So we're pushing in two places through the feet. Heels into the wall. Toes and balls the feet into the floor. Tighten your leg muscles. Get every muscle in your legs to engage. Now use your fingertips. Grip the mat. Pull yourself forward. The crown of the head is growing towards your fingertips. See if you can walk your fingertips like half a centimeter forward. Start on one hand, move to the other. Good. Tuck your chin. And roll the crown of your head. Towards your fingertips. Ears to the crown of the head, reach for your fingertips, roll over, pull away from the wall, resist those ropes, and now walk your hands in towards you. Keep your feet where they are. Take your right hand to your left thigh, grab hold of it. Take your left arm to your lower back. Pull yourself towards your left thigh. Pull and look towards the ceiling. Keep pressing away the wall and the floor with your feet. Now the more you pull yourself towards your left thigh, the more you twist and look towards the ceiling. Breathe. Use gravity to your advantage. Through the right thigh, and then just use gravity to your advantage. Breathe. Use your legs. Push away the wall. Push away the floor. Tighten those leg muscles. Twist nice and slow, coming center. Taking our hands first to the floor, and then walking our hands to the underneath the shoulders. Step your feet off the wall. Walk your feet towards your hands until you meet resistance from the ropes. And then place your hands on your hips, elbows pointing towards the ceiling, bend your knees. Come up, use your core, pull your navel and your ribs towards your spine as you come up. Good job. Our blood pressure is going to be all off, so just walk back to the wall. Take your head to the wall. Reach your arms all the way up the ropes to the top. Close your eyes and tighten your leg muscles. We're shunting the blood up to the brain by squeezing the thighs, the legs, squeezing the glutes, and sending the blood to the brain. If you ever stand up too quickly and you see like little stars, that's the first sign that you're going to faint. If you can squeeze your leg muscles just when you see those stars, you can prevent the fading spell. Breathe. Three more breaths like this. Squeeze those leg muscles. Squeeze your glutes. Our blood pressure normalizes so much faster this way. Ropes. A 
don't let go of the ropes. We don't want to lose our balance or fall. We're just going to bend one knee and slide the rope out and then the other. Good. We've survived so far. <laughs> How much time do we have? Okay, I want to make sure we do something for our hamstrings. So we're going to take our chair to the mat. The back of our seat is facing the wall. It's not touching the wall, but it's quite close. And we need a yoga blanket. I'm going to place my yoga blanket on the chair seat against the wall. And now what we're going to do is try to estimate how long our legs are. We're going to be standing with the left leg supporting us, our hands on our hips, and we're going to step our right foot to the wall. Now the end goal is to not use the chair at all, and that we get strong enough that we're balanced with our left heel just underneath the left hip with our hands on our hips, and we can push away the wall. Now, most of us are not going to be able to do that today. We're going to need the chair. We need to rest the back of our ankle or our heel on the chair and push our heel into the wall. One day, we'll be able to not use the chair and just push away the wall. And maybe even flex our foot, drawing the toes and the ball of the foot away from the wall. I just want to look at everyone. If you need your ropes for balance, you're welcome to use them. when we're holding a pose that's challenging. So we push away the floor with the left leg as that right hip lifts, we send it back down, the sit bone and the hip drop. Let's just create a flow now. We're gonna inhale the arms up. Exhale, lower the arms. Push away the wall with your right heel. Push away the floor with the left foot. Inhale up. Lower. Inhale up. Exhale lower. Strengthening the hamstrings. Last one. Now reach forward. Touch the wall. Tuck your chin in. Hang your forehead so it can touch your shin. And now sink your right sit bone. Sink your right hip. It wants to lift. Grow the crown of your head towards the wall, towards your fingertips. And now see if you can push away the wall with your right heel. Press. All that work is in the right glute. We're going to feel that. Now look towards your fingertips. Look beyond. Look all the way up towards the ceiling. Excellent. Hard work. 
We can feel it right into the SI on the right side. Deep inhale here. Push away the wall and see if you can bring your hands to your hips balancing. Good. Shoulder blades together. Inhale your arms up. We're going to create a twist. Look to your right fingertips, the left fingertips, point to the wall, the right away from the wall. Good. Now we have to go the other way. So inhale, look towards the wall, hands come up. Exhale, look towards your left fingertips, the right fingertips now reach for the wall. Use your right heel, push away the wall, it'll help stabilize your balance. Inhale back up. Hands to your hips. Tell yourself your right leg weighs nothing. We're going to step the right foot right to the floor. Walk off the tension in your hips and your glutes. And let's do the other side. I know, it's a hard one. <coughs> Hands on the hips, left heel to, to the wall. We know our chair is there, so if we need the Achilles, the heel to rest on something, it's there. If you want to work at a higher level, you're just pushing away the wall with the left heel. Hands on your hips, push away the floor with your supporting leg and notice the left hip lifts. Send your left sit bone and your left hip down towards the floor. Now inhale the arms up. Exhale, arms down. Inhale up. Exhale lower. Inhale up. Exhale lower. Our movement is linked to our breathing. Sweep the arms up as you inhale. Push away the wall. If you can't flex your foot, draw the toes and the balls of the feet away from the wall. Inhale up. Deep breath. Exhale. Inhale. shoulders from this. Exhale, reach forward, fingertips to the wall. Tuck your chin in. Hang your forehead towards your shin. Now push away the wall with the left heel. That action comes from your left hip. Press through from the hip. Now grow longer, crown of the head, reaches for the fingertips, lengthen the spine. Now look up, look towards your fingertips or look beyond your fingertips up the wall. You can really feel the left glute, the left sit bone here. So if you walk your fingertips up the wall higher, Push away the wall. Inhale your hands all the way up. Let's create a twist. Exhale, look towards your left fingertips, right fingertips to the wall. Good. Inhale back up. Exhale, left fingertips to the wall. Look at your right fingertips, push away the wall to stay balanced. Inhale back up. Excellent, hands to your hips. Step your left foot right to the floor if you can. Tell yourself it's feather light. Walk off the tension in your hamstrings and your glutes. Okay, good news. All the work is done. We're gonna do a restorative shoulder stand now. We need to leave our chair where it is. 
placing a bolster on the seat so that it just touches the back of the chair. And then we're going to take another bolster on a diagonal. It sits on top of the bolster, but it rests against the back of the chair again. Our third bolster. This is dependent on our torso length. I have a longer torso, some of you may have a shorter torso. What we're looking to do is have enough exposed that our shoulder blades and head end up on the mat, but the rest of our back is supported by the bolster. So for me, this is about right, because I'm going to have my pelvis here. Most of my back is supported, just shoulder blades and head. Now, what's really important is supporting our head and shoulders and neck. Take a Mexican blanket and open it up like this. It has to be as wide as our shoulders or just a little bit wider. We're going to lay it in front of our bolster. Smooth it out. We need to layer. We're going to have one more blanket on top for comfort. We always want to support our head and neck in a position like this. So I've got another blanket now opened up just as wide or a little bit wider than my shoulders, and it's on the top of the Mexican. Okay, the easiest way to get into this pose is to use the ropes. Take hold of your lower ropes and straddle the bolster that's on the mat. Rise in so they touch the chair or the bolster seated on the chair. And then bend your knees and lower your pelvis and pull your pelvis in so it's almost under your chair seat. Hold on to your ropes and kick your legs up. Only let go of one rope. We need to make sure that our elbow comes to the folded blankets. If our elbow comes to the folded blankets, we're in the perfect position now to lower down the shoulder blades to the floor, our head to the mat. We've done lots of work and this pose helps take all that oxygenated blood we've created in the body and send it back to the internal organs, to the brain. It's a rejuvenation pose. Reach your fingertips towards the chair legs, and then relax your arms to the ground, palms flipped upwards. Close your eyes. Relax here. I want to look at everybody. I just want to make sure everyone's in the pose correctly. the most heaviness on 
the muscles, that area of the body. It helps that area of the body to let go of tension. So because we're in a restorative shoulder stand, there's a lot of weight being placed on the upper thoracic back, on our shoulder blades, on the traps. That helps us release tension in those areas. Most of us, just through stressful lives, tense up in that area. Now we don't have to work at this. We literally just have to lie here and allow our body to relax. Use the props you have, your body weight and gravity to do everything for you. Relax the very tips of the toes. Let go of tension in the soles of the feet. of your feet, ankles, and toes. Allow your legs, your heels to feel heavy. Melt them into this supporting equipment. Let go of tension in the palms of the hands. Relax the fingertips. Smooth out the eyelids. Relax the eyes. Relax the forehead. The scalp. in the ears, swallow. Relax the muscles in the throat.
ridiculously happy here. Let go of tension down the bridge of the nose. Relax across the cheekbones. and then we'll move into Shavasana. both knees and place the left foot on the edge of your chair seat. Use your right foot to flip off the bolsters. Keep your knees up high. Roll to your right. Right off your bolster. Right off the blankets. Now we're going to use our chair to finish our shavasana but not with the bolster. And if we're going to use the blanket just one for the head and not underneath the shoulder blades anymore. <coughs> so if you want to use support for your head that's fine or else you're going to lie back here, kicking your legs right back up onto the chair seat. So we finish our Shavasana with our legs elevated, our back completely in a neutral position to finish. Now, can I put a blanket over anybody for Shavasana? Yes, please. Okay. Because no matter how warm we got after doing a nice restored pose, we lose our heat.
much loss and then think of myself as having amnesia so that I lose my attachments to the world. And then the mind can be really empty when you're no longer concentrating on friends, family, acquaintances, when you no longer can attach yourself to your career or interests. When you let all of that go and you just allow yourself to be here now in the room, of your body and the sensations left behind from that shoulder stand. to do for the next several minutes. Just melt your body into your props. Just see your chair as an extension of the ground. Find a heaviness. Allow yourself to be supported.
deep inhale breath and on your next inhale softly open the eyes gazing up at the ceiling could be a shadow or a shape trace your eyes around that shape Shut up first. 